what's up guys welcome back to the channel my name is Amber with the Ramblin Richardsons and today we're downtown actually down here with my mom at cheer up Charlie's for a I'm from driftwood uh, viewing actually they're gonna show my story tonight so do me a big huge favor go down there and like and subscribe ring the notification bell that way you don't miss any of the videos that we post and if you haven't seen the video that I had done in a collaboration with Nathan, I'm from Driftwood. Make sure you go check it out. And let me show you around Cheer Up Char Charlie's for just a second. was the first openly gay elected official um, in California. And they made a film about him um, about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and I saw that film and the next morning I was thinking about this photograph. And what this photo meant to me, um, what stood out to me is that Harvey Milk was known as being um, in San Francisco, this big queer and trans mecca. But here he is in this photo proclaiming that he's from this town that no one's ever heard of. Um, no offense to any Woodmerians in the crowd, but um, that really resonated with me because uh, I too am from a town that most people have never heard of. And what that meant to me, what this meant is that no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, you're not alone. And that's the message that I wanted to carry uh, to everyone else uh, through the power of storytelling, by telling our stories in our own words. And one, one last thing is that if, if we don't tell our own stories, one of two things will happen. Either someone else will tell it for us and it won't be right, or even worse, no one will tell it at all. So the stories you're about to watch, uh, it's very brave of people to share their stories publicly. It's very meaningful. It can be life-saving. It has been life-saving, life-changing, improving, empowering, all those things. So uh, before we even start, thank you to the storytellers tonight uh, for being so brave to share your stories, especially in a public setting. So. The queer people should not be parents. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is a quote by our almost governor at one time, Kinky Friedman, when he was asked about what he thought about giving gays the right to marry. And his answer was, well, I believe they have the right to be just as miserable as the rest of us. <laughs> uh, uh, if, I do, if I did my math correct, your child is about 16 months old right now? Yes. Is it uh, still a dream, or is it <laughs> still loving every second of it? Absolutely, there's just a lot more poop than I had anticipated. <laughs> Everything is a brand new experience that she's having for the first time, walking outside and finding a rock, and again, there was poop with that one. Uh, but it's... It's so interesting to see her little mind work. It's amazing. And what do you think that, um, in terms of being a queer parent, what do you think the biggest, um, it, you talked about how the joys of being a parent are those, this, the same, you know? Uh, what's, is there like a unique challenge to being a queer parent that you, I, that you think is up there? Up there? Probably the biggest challenge of being a queer parent is education for the folks who just don't understand 
when we go out into public and I get, my wife and I both get questions all the time. Most people think that we adopted her and we have to educate them on it. And it opens the door for a conversation that's bigger than that. It was really important for me to share. So I shared a lot of our journey for the IVF on my own YouTube channel for part of our friends and family to follow along, but also for other people out there to understand like what it takes to have to go through the process to have a family. And I feel like that's probably the biggest barrier when I'm out in public is to educate people that, you know, we know we had her, like my wife for sure had her, like I was there. And there was also a lot of poop. So it's just one of those things. Or, uh, well, there are. If there, the queer and trans people out there are thinking about having children, um, you've been through it, you've gone through the process, what, what's the one thing that you would tell them? Be patient and kind to yourself. <laughs> Grandma's asking, when are y'all gonna have another baby? Yeah, that's my mom. Um, as soon as we buy dad's house, we're planning actually for number two baby 2024. Well, that's a wrap for I'm from Driftwood Storyteller series for now. Um, so honored to be a part of that and make sure you go out there and check out the I'm from Driftwood YouTube channel. Go check out the other storytellers, Ivy and Darshan. Um, yeah, I'm really just blown away by how much positivity that that whole series brings from not only across all 50 states, but uh, also across, I believe, like 20 different countries. I just wanted to give a big, big, big thank you to Nathan and the other storytellers and all the folks who showed up tonight in support. And also, hi, Aunt Cheryl. Um, not sure if she'll see this, but I wanted to give a shout out to Nathan's aunt, who was also there, as well as my mom. Hey guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, life's about the journey and not the destination. We'll see you on the next video.